Okay, and we are live. Que tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another live stream Thursday evening, 7.35 p.m. Uh, here again, as I said, to go through some of the main news stories that have caught my attention today in the press. A few stories around that have caught my attention. We'll also go into the comment section uh, on recent videos, see what has been happening there, as I normally do. And uh, in the second half of the video, around the 20-minute mark, we'll go into the chat section on today's live stream and check out what is happening there. I've seen that there's already some activity there, so hopefully we'll get a decent chat activity session today. Now, before I begin, I'm going to put the like icon on the screen. If you haven't hit the like icon yet, please do so. It keeps me motivated as I go through these videos. Just below you will find it, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. And I'd just like to say thanks to people that have supported the channel in recent times. Whether they are a Patreon, whether they have bought me a coffee or a wine or a beer, whatever, and also to the Super Thanks option on YouTube and also the Super Chat option. Thank you very much for your support to help keep the channel growing and alive. Now, the first piece of news today, and it relates to one of Spain's biggest companies, in fact, probably the uh, first or second biggest construction company here in Spain. And today they got the OK from shareholders to move to the Netherlands. The majority of shareholders approved the change of the multinational's headquarters to the Netherlands. The company itself assures that employment will be maintained and that the operation is not being carried out for tax reasons. The company's chairman, Rafael del Pino, assures that Ferrovial is not leaving Spain. He explains that the transfer of the company's legal headquarters to the Netherlands affects exclusively the parent company and insists that it does not affect the company's operational con continuity in the country, Spain, activity, employment projects, the investment plan, the tax contribution and the listing on the Spanish stock exchanges will be maintained. Spain has always been our country and we will not give it up, he said. Now, this is a story that has created a lot of talk in newspapers in recent times when it was first announced a couple of weeks ago, I think. Uh, it was a, a, like a bombshell landed on the government. They weren't prepared for this. And ever since then, the government has been trying to uh, convince Ferrovial not to move its headquarters to the Netherlands for various reasons they are going to move it there. Basically, they want to become more competitive uh, uh, from a business point of view. And they also want to have easier access to credit because, as we know, companies in Spain uh, have uh, historically or traditionally been affected by Spain's credit rating. So when Spain's credit rating is not the best, uh, companies have trouble accessing credit, apparently, and uh, by moving to the Netherlands, which probably is a more business-friendly country than Spain. Uh, I don't want to be the person that says that, but I've just said it. Uh, they're, they're hoping that it's going to be easy for them to do business and also to uh, list on the United States uh, Stock Exchange. So we'll see what the reaction is tomorrow from the government and uh, we'll see uh, when Ferrovial finally does move its headquarters to the Netherlands. As I said, uh, perhaps a more business-friendly country is the Netherlands. Now, a bad piece of news, and it is that people may die, headline, Hospital waiting lists in Spain hit record levels. Just after her 90th birthday, Isabel Ruiz began to babble at a family gathering. Her daughter knew immediately something was wrong. Not a single word of what Isabel was saying made sense. Despite her age, the mother had never had any problems, so she decided to call a doctor. The diagnosis was a microstroke, and to prevent this from happening again, Isabel was referred to a neurologist in Valencia, Spain, to assess her, con to assess her condition. It was not until two months later that she was able to visit the specialist. The neurologist ordered her to take three tests. But 11 months later, she's still waiting to take the most important one, a CAT scan. Isabella's, is, Isabel's is not an isolated case. Hospital waiting lists in Spain are at historic highs. And uh, I can second that because anybody who's trying to see a specialist at the moment, uh, you are on most likely a very long waiting list unless doctors and hospitals consider you to be a priority. I had a uh, dermatologist uh, special, uh, specialist uh, before the pandemic. During the pandemic, that uh, spe those specialist visits were uh, taken off the list. I had to go back to uh, a GP to try to get back on the list again, and the uh, specialist appointment is around six or seven months away. 
Uh, luckily, I don't have any uh, skin conditions at the moment, I don't think, but always a good idea to get your checked, uh, your skin checked every year or every six months if you can, especially if you've got fair skin like me, but uh, getting an appointment with uh, a specialist, a specialist dermatologist in the national health system is not an easy task. Uh, luckily, I have private insurance and that is most likely where I will go to see a dermatologist if I want a faster service. But as we saw there, People may die. Hospital waiting lists in Spain hit record levels. A bit of a sensationalist headline, of course, but the fact of the matter is that if you don't get a serious illness detected in time uh, by a specialist, you could, in fact, end up in a worse state. Third piece of news is this one here. Spain's anti-smoking law to ban smoking on terraces remains in limbo until after the elections. Will José Mignones become the health minister who finally pushes through the new anti-smoking law? It will not be easy, or at least not in this legislature. Although the latest steps taken are moving in that direction, the approval of a new regulation governing electronic cigarettes and imposing generic packaging on packets. A new regulation that ignores, however, the most controversial issues contemplated in the Integral Plan for the Prevention of Smoking such as the regulation of tobacco consumption in public spaces, terraces, sports venues, ETC. Terraces, of course, being outdoor seating areas at bars and restaurants. And as we know, that is where smokers gather to enjoy their cigarettes or their durries, as we used to call them in Australia back in the day, or their darts, which is another slang word that we use. And uh, basically, if you go to any bar or restaurant, you will see at the end of the night lots of cigarette butts on the ground. But the idea that the government has is to bring Spain in line with other European regulation and prohibit smoking in these public spaces, for example, outdoor terraces. You can't smoke inside bars or restaurants, but of course you can smoke outside. And that is the next step to be prohibited. But we are in an election year and it will not be popular considering the amount of people that still smoke in this country, which I think is over the 33% mark. So it wouldn't be a popular decision. Uh, and if you uh, include, uh, let's say, uh, casual smokers, people that maybe only smoke at weekends or when they go out, I think the percentage would be higher. But that's just my opinion. Another piece of news here is that Spain is also considering banning ChatGPT, list of countries concerned about AI growing. Spain considers banning ChatGPT. The list of countries concerned about AI's growth is no mystery uh, that ChatGPT, OpenAI's flagship artificial intelligence tool, is in the spotlight. The software, which has proven to be a real success and a revolution, by the way, has captivated companies such as Microsoft and provoked fears from titans such as Google. However, it is encouraging uh, sorry, encountering countries such as Italy that have decided to block it due to its major problems. And uh, next up could be none other than Spain. Yeah, interesting. I use Chat B Chat GPT. I'll, I'll put it out there. I've done a couple of videos using the information that I have got from Chat GPT. When I went to Murcia, I uh, got information about Murcia from Chat GPT. And recently, when I went to Tenerife in the Canary Islands, I got some information from ChatGPT, uh, artificial intelligence. Italy, the first country to say that they will be banning ChatGPT, Spain may follow. What's the reason? Well, apparently, from what I've read, it's all about data protection and the very strict data protection rules in the European Union, stronger than other countries. And that perhaps will cause other European countries, Spain possibly, to ban ChatGPT and follow uh, Ms. Meloni's um, uh, lead there in Italy, where they announced earlier this week that uh, ChatGPT no longer uh, in that country. So interesting, but uh, I'm a fan of the technology, but obviously some people see it as a potential problem. Let us know what you think in the chat section. Are you in favor or against AI programs like ChatGPT? Or is it just the beginning of something uh, bigger and more threatening to our current way of life. Let me know. Now we're up to the uh, nine minute mark, which means that I'm going to go into the comment section now. The first comment uh, left is this one here from uh, Koffer. Uh, and Koffer says, it's good that you promote Spain with your wonderful videos, but I was wondering when you talk about people wanting to move to Spain to live there, 
could you do some videos on the real estate markets there? For example, how much would it cost to purchase an apartment or house where you live or even in Portugal where you holiday? That, I think, would help in determining what kind of budgets people want to come to Spain to live can afford. Thank you, Stu. Yeah, Koffa, thanks for the uh, suggestion and the input there with your comment. Uh, I have talked about these things in the past. In fact, I've done various uh, comparisons on the cost of living in cities here in Spain. I think I did one last year, if I remember correctly, between uh, Barcelona, maybe Madrid, Valencia, some of the more, uh, well, some of the bigger cities here in Spain, some of the mo more important cities where people are considering moving to. I think I did that last year. Um, but uh, in the general day-to-day, -day, the videos, I don't talk about that much, but I'm sure that there are um, other channels out there that do focus on this a little bit more. But again, to speak about these things regularly, I, I don't think a lot of people would be interesting considering that uh, a big part of the audience is either living in Spain or has uh, a house already in Spain and comes here quite frequently. That seems to be the general uh, uh, viewing audience, I believe or other people that have some type of interest with the country, of course. But I will uh, keep your uh, your suggestion in mind, uh, Koffa, and uh, maybe look into some of the prices currently when it comes to uh, real estate. All I can say is that where I live here on the outskirts of Madrid, it's very expensive at the moment. Uh, unbelievable some of the uh, house prices currently going, not only when it comes to buying, but also when it comes to renting as well. In fact, there's a house just up the road which uh, was uh, had a rental price on it of uh, 2,000 euros a month. And uh, considering that uh, the average salary in Spain is probably less than 2,000 euros a month, that's a lot of money to be paying for renting a house 15 kilometers away from the center of the capital city, in my opinion. But thanks for the suggestion, Koffer. Another one here from Riz. I'm currently living in the UK. How can I stay in Spain uh, for more than what they are actually stating? Yeah, very difficult, Riz, now, because uh, your country has chosen to leave the union was very easy before. You could come out here for six months, uh, go back before you had to start to pay tax here in Spain. You could move freely around the European Union. There were no restrictions. Uh, it was great times for, for many people. But the referendum was the referendum, of course. I don't want to touch on that too much uh, this evening. But basically, uh, Riz, you're in the same boat as uh, Australians, Canadians, people from the States, basically anybody from outside the European Union. And the only way that you can come to Spain now is if you uh, have 500,000 euros and you buy a golden visa. Uh, you're a digital nomad and you can uh, you fit the, the conditions to get that visa. Or you have some other way to prove that you can live out here comfortably without having to depend on benefits or the state or anything like that. Or you can try to get a job, which uh, we'll see in a, 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 a comment coming up um, is also not that easy. Uh, nowadays. As I said, it was easier before, Riz, but uh, of course we all know what happened to uh, to change that situation, unfortunately. Um, another comment here from, um, there's one here from uh, Patricia. Here in uh, Tenerife, you need to be given a contract then and then, uh, then you and the employer have to jointly apply for a visa if coming from the UK. So that's answering Riz's question as well. I believe you have to demonstrate that a local cannot do the job. Yeah, uh, Patricia, that has historically been the case or traditionally been the case when I, I mentioned this the other day because somebody asked the question, when I went through the process of uh, getting a residency permit in this country, a work permit, uh, that's what I had to do. And luckily, back in the day, um, uh, what they call a, a native English teacher, uh, only people from the United Kingdom and England could theoretically compete for those jobs with me. So it was relatively easy. But if you're trying to get into the Spanish labor market, maybe trying to get a job uh, that the average Spaniard could do, uh, that job has to be shown that there's nobody here can do it, as Patricia points out there. So let's say you wanted to come down here and work in IT, let's say. You, the, the, the company would have to prove that there's no Spanish person or European Union citizen qualified for that job. Then if they can't find somebody from inside the EU or Spain, they can go outside. They can go to Mexico, they can go to the other South American countries, they can go to the States, they can go to wherever. 
to, 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 to allow you to get a job. That was the situation, and according to Patricia, it is still that way. So basically, if you're coming from outside the European Union, it's difficult to work in this country unless you are a digital nomad, which is uh, probably the best option, Riz. One other comment here from uh, Hernan, or Hernan. Uh, at least Spain and Portugal are doing something about the housing prices uh, crisis here in the US, especially in places like Florida. Home prices are through the roof because of foreign investors and out-of-state people alike. Buyers from states like California and New York coming here, buying real estate cash, uh, buying real estate in cash, driving prices up like crazy, leaving middle-class locals without uh, uh, inventory, inventory available and un unaffordable housing. Yeah, seems to be uh, a common problem in many places at the moment, uh, Hernan. Spain and Portugal are, are trying to do something about it. I don't know whether they've come up with the solution yet. Portugal are talking about different things. We'll also say in, in a minute what Portugal is suggesting. And uh, places like uh, the Balearic Islands are talking about banning uh, foreign property ownership in order to try to fix the problem. Not only short-term rentals, but also uh, trying to ban foreigners from buying property. But the European Union has apparently spoken and said that uh, uh, it might sound good, but it's not really feasible in today's European Union because there is freedom of movement, freedom of capital and things like that. So I can understand the problem that uh, Hernan is saying there. People with more money come into your area, which has happened in Portugal. It's happened here in Spain as well. And it squeezes the locals out. And uh, Spain's trying to do something, or they are suggesting uh, remedies to the problem. But uh, perhaps uh, down there in uh, Florida, USA, Mr. DeSantis, or whatever his name is, the governor, is not putting solutions on the table. Don't know. Maybe he's too worried about the... Uh, 2024 elections that could be one of the reasons i don't know i don't come from florida i don't know but according to her uh, Hernan's comment there there's a crisis another one here from uh, eric star 031 Stu, not sure if you heard but portuguese the the portuguese government discussing placing a law on foreign property owners to rent out properties they own or lose them if they do not reside in portugal there we go that caught my attention uh this uh, article here from rick so i looked into it a little bit more and uh, these are just suggestions that are being thrown around at the moment. Again, when it comes to uh, constitutions and things like that, a lot of these moves are, are technically not constitutional nowadays, I don't think. They get thrown around by left the left side of politics. You know, we're going to seize property, but then the other side of politics uh, says that, you know, well, you are encroaching on uh, the right to uh, own property and, uh, and uh, uh, the right to, um, you know, uh, to do whatever you want with something that you buy if you buy a house uh, in Portugal which any European citizen can do completely legally uh, you don't want a government saying that uh, hang on if you're not living there we're going to take that property off you and force you to rent it out to somebody even though you don't want to do it I don't know whether nowadays you can do this but as I said some left-wing parties in Spain have suggested something similar in Portugal it seems they're suggesting something similar because they're desperate to find a solution because locals are unhappy but again, when you have a European Union, which is very unequal when it comes to the North and the South, and people in the North have a lot more money than people in the South, then this is going to happen, right? And when you have programs like Golden Visas, where you encourage people to come to your country, if they have a lot of money, 500,000 euros, uh, you know, not everybody has that in the bank, uh, you know, they come into your country, they buy up property, maybe two or three, and they do whatever they want with it, because... That's what they have been encouraged to do. And then there's a social problem and governments backtrack. But I don't know whether in today's European Union and also with Portugal's constitution, the government can force people to do things like that. I don't know. And another side of the argument is that there's a lot of vacant buildings in Portugal which apparently belong to the government, but the government uh, refuses to do them up. And that could be also a solution to Portugal's housing problem. So interesting. Thanks for uh, pointing that one out. Now we're up to the 20 minute mark, which means that I'm going to bring the news and comment section to an end. I'm going to put the like icon up on the screen again. So if you haven't hit the like icon yet, please do so. We're up to 76 likes. So maybe you'll be 77, 78, or maybe 78 now. 77 has just uh, ticked over. Maybe you'll be uh, like number 80. So hit that like button if you can. It's also time to change the backdrop. Now, this backdrop was sent in from uh, Ed, who's a regular viewer there in Catalonia, Ed. 
And uh, this was uh, Sid Jez. Uh, maybe Ed went there on holidays recently. Don't know. But a nice Mediterranean town is Sit Jez there on the coast. I think just south of uh, Barcelona it is. So thank you very much, Ed, for sending this one through. Now, if you've got a similar picture that you would like to see on the backdrop, the email address is this one here. I've got a bit of a backlog at the moment, but I will get around to putting pictures up. I'm sort of getting a little bit uh, pickier as well. But the address is this one here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. So if you've got a picture like this one of uh, a nice blue Mediterranean on a nice sunny day overlooking the town of Sitges, send it through. Or if you've got any other picture that you would like to send through as well, whether it's a, a street shot here in Spain, a market shot, maybe you saw a, you came across a nice market with some interesting food on display, send it through. I'm open to all suggestions, but um, as I said, I'm getting a little bit pickier, so uh, the quality has to be decent as well. So uh, try to send through a, a decent quality picture if you can. Now, into the chat section I go. Let's see what's going on there today. Uh, always lots of activity in the chat section. Hopefully today is no exception. Pauline is the first person that I see in the chat section today, coming in from Rojales. Cooler today, but the sun came through eventually. Cooler today in Madrid. The uh, temperatures have dropped about um, uh, 10 degrees from earlier this week. I think we were up around 29 on Tuesday. Today, Thursday, around 17 or 18. So a bit chillier today, but uh, not complaining because the sun was shining. So I'm still able to get out of my bike because, uh, as you guys know, I'm on my um, 2023 fitness campaign to, to, drop a few, uh, to drop a few kgs, if I can. But it's difficult <laughs> with the lifestyle that I have. Uh, Zach coming in from uh, Vancouver. Hit the like button already has Zach. Thank you very much for that, Zach. Hope all is well there in uh, British Columbia. Uh, Andrew coming in from uh, a, uh, a wet, uh, windy and sunny all at the same time. Cold uh, southeast London. Hoping all is well. Uh, hopefully it is uh, all is well here, uh, Andrew, and I hope for you too. Um, Andrew's also mentioned something about uh, Cantabria, apparently an area that Andrew likes. Uh, telling uh, Barbara about it. Um, Cantabria is stunningly beautiful. Have you been there before? Uh, absolutely, uh, Andrew. Uh, Cantabria is a very nice little uh, autonomous community squeezed up there in the north of the country, obviously where a lot of ferries from the United Kingdom come in uh, to. And that's why people know Cantabria, but it is a very green part of the country and uh, probably more um, has more in common with parts of the UK than it does with other parts of Spain, given how green it is. All right, what else we've got going on here? Let's have a look here quickly. Barbara's coming in from the uh, Playa Flamenca, going to Cantabria next week. The forecast is saying that it will be sunny, so fingers crossed. There we go, off to Cantabria next week. Uh, you want decent weather in Cantabria. I went there <laughs> 20 years ago and, uh, wow, it rained a lot. But again, if you want uh, green, you have to expect rain from time to time. But it's one of those persistent rains where if it starts raining uh, in the morning, it can last all day in Cantabria. But then again, as I said, if you want green, that's what we have to put up with. Kevin coming in from uh, Acula Martos down there in Jaén today. Um due to get into the high 20s from Saturday. I think that's the general characteristic, uh, Kevin, as the, the weekend uh, comes around. Temperatures are going to be on their way up again. But I have seen rain forecast for next week here in Madrid, which is, uh, which is good. Uh, Ian's saying that the picture is out of focus. I don't know which picture Ian is referring to because I saw that comment even before I went live. Maybe it's the uh, thumbnail that's out of focus, uh, Ian. Thanks for the uh, input. Philip is coming in also from a sunny but cool Sussex, relaxing and going to be watching whilst enjoying a nice cup of tea. Two English. Absolutely, a nice cup of tea. At uh, what time is it there in England? 7pm. Um, Never too late for a cup of tea for some people. I, uh, I'm not a coffee drinker or a tea drinker after 1pm. Uh, That's my uh, cut-off limit when it comes to uh, tea and coffee. Although in the middle of winter, every now and again, a nice cup of tea uh, goes down well. A bit later. 
Uh, Michael coming in from a sunny and windy Torox. Uh, Michael sent through some photos uh, recently as well. I'll get around to those uh, soon, Michael. Thanks for the um, contribution. Alan coming in from a, a cold San Diego. 11 degrees Celsius there today. Quite chilly for that part of the world, I imagine. Uh, Grant coming in from uh, Seattle, going to Huelva, hoping the weather is nice. Well, again, you can almost be guaranteed uh, good weather in that part of the country from uh, the end of March onwards, unless you get a, a, a storm or something. But uh, weather, uh, the weather in Huelva, uh, normally good, uh, or at least that's what the people from Huelva tell me. Uh, a couple of students that I have had in the past. Uh, Amanda coming in from a, a chilly Shropshire. Richard coming in from North York, still cold and wet there. Alan um, uh, coming in from uh, South London, but uh, today in the southwest of the country apparently is Alan. Mugga coming in from El Campello down there in Alicante. I think um, Mugga is currently located uh, when not in Ireland. Ricardo, though, also coming in from uh, North London, uh, sipping on a nice Rioja called Baron Amarillo. Whilst cooking my pescado frito, I think that would be. Uh, hope all is well back in Spain. Absolutely, and uh, hope you enjoy that nice Rioja. I might uh, partake in one myself when I finish this live stream. Remy with a Y watching uh, today. Finally, a little bit of rain. We had some rain here as well, uh, Remy, last night, which was um, <laughs> for the first time in two or three months, I think, that uh, we've experienced that rainfall. So it was, uh, yeah, good. Stan coming in from Poland. Philip also coming in uh, saying hello to everybody. D coming in from Playa de Oliva. Regular viewers, everybody so far. The official BSA coming in from uh, Dallas. Uh, UB also coming in from uh, Pennsylvania, I think. Hola, Botard. Obviously, uh, Portuguese learner is UB, or maybe Portuguese, I don't know. Uh, Amanda sent a pink hand waving. I think that's some type of uh, emoji. Renan coming in from Los Angeles. William also coming in uh, uh, booked to go to Betty Dorm. Uh, for three nights on the 24th of April, five weeks after returning from our 48th anniversary on Lanzarote. So back to Spain quickly, William. Lanzarote and then Benidorm. Lanzarote looks like a nice place. I've been uh, looking into the Canary Islands, considering my fascination with that part of Spain recently. And uh, Lanzarote looks like a nice part of the world, I'll tell you. A little bit expensive to uh, travel there at the moment for me, but uh, it will be on my list of places to see. Uh, Manuel coming in from a sunny but windy Valencia, Spanish as a Spanish national, had a lot of trouble finding work. Uh, everyone tells me English teacher is an easy option. Is it easy? Um, yeah, generally it has been uh, easy, Manuel. If you uh, if you have a, a a qualification in English, if you've got a um, like a, a, a C one or a, or a C two, and you can um, you can uh, get yourself out of um, um, you know any difficulty with somebody asks you a question, you know how the language works. You shouldn't have a problem teaching English. Don't know about Valencia. Don't know what the market's like in Valencia, but in Madrid, uh, normally there's a, a quite a buoyant market. Um, I have worked in the past with a lot of uh, Spanish people who are English teachers, and a lot of them have done at university philologia or something like that. Uh, is their English 100% uh, perfect? No, but they do uh, control grammar and uh, vocabulary reasonably well. And uh, to teach lower levels, of course, uh, there's no issue. Maybe a little bit difficult when it comes to higher levels because they're looking for perhaps uh, an English person or an Irish or, you know, somebody who uh, speaks English as a first language. But uh, definitely, uh, Manuel, you could give it a try. Uh, a lot of Romanians are coming to Spain now and teaching English as well. Uh, somebody told me that the other day. Uh, people from the east of Europe that have good language skills coming here. So, um, yeah, it's a fairly buoyant market. Can't guarantee that it's the best paid job in the world, but you'll be able to work. Oscar coming in from uh, Houston, Texas. Que tal, amigos? Que tal, Oscar? Uh, Sani's back in the UK after uh, some time in Spain. Can't wait to be back for the summer. 
Absolutely. Uh, Daz coming in from Lanzarote, which I was just uh, speaking about. Uh, as I said, it looks like a nice place uh, in the world to be, Lanzarote. Fuerteventura as well. Now, uh, I'm up to the 29 minute mark. I'm going to change the backdrop in a minute because I've got another one to look at today. Rory coming in from uh, Palma de Mallorca. Hello, Rory. Ted asking people for uh, likes coming in from Newport, Rhode Island. Sailing weather there. Home of the America's Cup, I think, Rhode Island. Um, or at least that's where I think Australia beat uh, the United States when we won the America's Cup many, many years ago, back in the 1980s. I think it was in Rhode Island. Uh, Daz uh, saying that the NHS announced the record number of people waiting for treatment, too, at 7.22 million in February, and that doesn't take into account the current strikes. Common problems, uh, Daz, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you're in uh, the UK, whether you're here in Spain, the COVID pandemic definitely uh, set the hospital systems back a couple of years when it comes to uh, the accumulation of uh, appointments and things like that, people not seeing specialists. We, we can see the result uh, of that currently with, the, um, with, uh, with what's going on. And uh, I listen to Australian radio every day and the same problems are happening in Sydney and Melbourne and Perth and all of these places around the world. So everyone's in the same boat at the moment. So I think the idea is to, um, to try to uh, stay as healthy uh, as we can, if that's possible. Um, Dee's disappointed in the uh, Spanish health services compared to Portugal, where, where uh, she lived two years ago. Yeah, but D, I think it depends on where you are in Spain. Of course, every autonomous community uh, controls its health system. So it's not the same to go to a doctor or a hospital in Andalusia that it is to go to uh, a hospital or doctor in Valencia, Extremadura, Galicia, País Vasco, Madrid. Everywhere is different. Whereas in Portugal, the health system, I think, is controlled from Lisbon. So they're probably more centralized, and that could be a pro or a con, depending but uh, you're speaking from personal experience, so thanks for your input there. Uh, D also loves ChatGPT, like me. D, yeah, I uh, I enjoy it. I think uh, I've ans I, I put stuff in, and it gives me a decent answer every time. I don't have a problem with it, but um, um, people uh, obviously see it as a potential threat. Italy, as I mentioned before, when it comes to uh, data. Or maybe they're worried about it'll just get out of control. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, maybe uh, D also suggested this as well, that maybe you need to get a VPN uh, to get back. If you're in Italy, get a VPN and try to get around the, the geo-blocking that will no doubt come to chat GPN. And if it happens here in Spain as well, we'll see if, uh, if a VPN can get around it. VPNs normally... Uh, get you around at geoblock sites, but sometimes the uh, the uh, the sites are, are cotton on to the fact, especially if there's um, you know uh, like a type of fee involved. Netflix has cracked down recently, but um, I don't, still don't have uh, problems accessing a lot of content, Australian content, uh, BBC recently, no problems. But um, yeah, uh, I think what happens with technology and VPNs, it's like a, a cat and mouse game. Um, the the tech company tries to stop the VPN and the VPN works its way around it and so it's always going back and forth. I think that's the way it works. Uh, what else we got going on here? Um, Michael uh, saying that um, chat GPT, your activity can be accessed by third parties and potentially made public, thus the temporary ban in Italy. There we go. So that's the reason for it there. Uh, so it's a data protection, obviously. Uh, U.S. correspondent Dave uh, coming in from a sunny St. Petersburg who uh, apparently uh, enjoying the time down there, Dave, I believe, uh, not deciding to uh, return. Staying down there for a little bit longer, I believe. Thanks, Dave. Big Blues Festival, that's probably the reason, right? Probably the reason, right? No Blues Festival in Madrid. Um, from... Uh, it's a surf day uh, with unemployment so high there. Maybe they need to build more houses and apartments to bring down prices. 
Yeah, they tried that in the past, but it backfired in Spain. There was a, <laughs> there was a, a real estate boom that uh, sent half the country broke. So I don't think they'll be trying that one again. And uh, there was an overstock of uh, empty houses and apartment blocks for seven years. That was the situation the last time they decided to do that. So sounds good in theory, but putting it into, into practice is something completely different. Uh, as we saw back when that real estate uh, bubble crashed in Spain, wow, it uh, destroyed the country and uh, a lot of people are still worried that that could happen again. Uh President Biden, apparently in Ireland, he loves the Irish. Does he have any uh, Irish blood, Biden? Not sure. I saw that he was there. So I read something in the uh, Spanish press that he uh, um, got his foot stuck in his mouth, I think. Said something wrong. Not sure exactly. Didn't read the whole article. But uh, yeah, President Biden uh, getting around. Close connections with Ireland, of course, between the two countries. Rory, the bulletin tells us that 83% of property transactions were with foreigners here in Mallorca. Average property price, 230000 There we go. That basically sums up the issue, uh, Rory, right? 83% of property transactions, foreign buyers. Because uh, people are not stupid. They go to a place like Mallorca, and um, I've heard firsthand from a, a bank executive who's now retired, she uh, she uh, loves Palma. She's from Valencia originally, but now lives in uh, Palma, Mallorca. She bought an apartment there, and uh, all of her neighbours are uh, Europeans, basically Switzerland. And she said the amount of uh, money that they've got is incredible compared to uh, the locals. We're talking very wealthy individuals who are able to snap up property in places like Mallorca because, let's be honest, uh, you know, it's a, a paradise for a lot of people, especially if you come from one of those cold, grey, uh, damp northern European countries. Yes, good. What else we got going on? Let's have a look. Now, I'm going to change the backdrop while I remember. Otherwise, I'll forget because we're up to 36 minutes. And this picture was sent in from uh, Colin, who's also a regular contributor when it comes to photos. And this one is uh, Murcia again, apparently. Not sure exactly where, but apparently it's a, a mining area down there somewhere. And uh, black sand beaches there in Murcia, apparently this picture where Colin uh, uh, took the photo of. Um, he mentions it. Or he doesn't mention exactly where it is in uh, Murcia, or at least I don't have the information. But thanks, Colin, for sending this one through. And again, if you've got a similar pic that you would like uh, seen on the backdrop to show off your photography skills, this is the address here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. Feel free to send them through or any other suggestion that you would like to give. Um, Daniel asking a question here. Uh, what do I think about the Basque country? Uh, well, I've only been to two uh, Basque provinces, um, uh, Alava and uh Bill uh, the Bill Bow, I can't remember what uh, Bill Bow Giputhqua is it I think um and uh, I was impressed by what I saw in fact I did a video a couple of years ago about Bill Bow and uh, I asked the question is this the best city in Spain obviously from a weather point of view no but for for other things that I saw there it was a very very good city and uh, Vitoria uh which is south of Bill Bow uh is also a, a very uh, nice city, in my opinion. So, definitely like definitely like the Basque Country, but again, it's a, it's a, one of the the, cold, the the colder and wetter parts of Spain. Green. Uh, that's uh, that's going on here. Uh, Gigi coming in here from uh, sunny North California. Hoping all is well there, Gigi. Hoping you're uh, enjoying the weather in Northern California. Richard coming in from a balmy Florida, United States. Very diverse audience uh, today. We've got uh, people from Poland, from Spain, from the UK, from Ireland, from the States, everywhere. Different states in the US. Fantastic. Rhonda is hot, according to Francis. The weather or, um, or uh, it's a place that you like. So in Australia, we, when, we used to say that uh, if we like something, that it was hot. You know, that's what we used to say back in the day. If, if you like something, it was hot, okay? The surf this morning was hot. That's what we used to say. Don't know whether it was other countries that had the same thing, but we used to use that expression back in the day. But I think you're referring to the weather there, Francis. Um, 
Sa- uh, Simon, uh, the uh, Lanzarote, who's apparently heading back to uh, Ireland soon. You don't need a property here in Lanzarote. Many of us uh, live in vans in the sunshine. Yeah, van life. I saw that in uh, Tenerife when I was there, Simon. Uh, car parks full of vans. And uh, people, of course, uh, living out of their van, enjoying the the um, the freedom to move around. That's basically what you get from uh, van life, right? Freedom. Angela and uh, John coming in from uh, Menorca, one of the other Balearic Islands. Drizzle and sun there today. Uh, El Paso, Texas here, uh, looking to move to Spain by the end of the year, BA. Thanks for the updates. Hope all goes well with that move from El Paso, down there on the border with Mexico. Um, yeah, France coming in from Ronda. So hot there, probably the weather, uh, Francis, that you were referring to that. Um, having a cold one in uh, Dorset with the uh, rain coming down. Absolutely, Paul. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. What else we got going on here quickly before I come to the end of the chat section? Dave coming in from um, uh, uh, the wife and uh, Dave considering moving to Tenerife at the end of the month. Can't well, Sorry, moving, not considering, moving to Tenerife at the end of the month. No consideration there, already uh, decided. Can't wait. Absolutely, uh, Dave, I'm sure you will enjoy it. Um, chat to some of the locals to, uh, to find out some of the, uh, some of the uh, uh, secrets of the island. But uh, the short time that I was there, absolutely enjoyed it. And um, I, I would also consider moving to a place like that. Absolutely, yeah. People saying jealous, jealous, moving to the Canaries, jealous. Absolute, absolutely. Heidi from Madrid coming in, off the doors at soon, hopefully to see uh, Heidi's mum. And my biggest fan, apparently, uh, Heidi's mum. Uh, your daily updates give us something to look forward to during lockdown. Yeah, a lot of people uh, got in contact with me during that time, uh, Heidi. I sort of kept people uh, in the loop with what was happening here in Spain, even though it was, you know, wasn't the best news that we were going through during that time, uh, of course. But um, a lot of people uh, came onto the channel uh, during that time, which uh, I'm grateful uh, for. A lot of people have stuck around, which I'm also grateful for as well. And uh, good to see that your mum is uh, a fan. I've uh, got a few other people in the UK that um, also uh, are keen to know what's happening down here because maybe they've got uh, children living here in Spain and they're interested to know what's going on uh, with uh, their children's lives as well. Absolutely. But thanks for that, Heidi. Great. Um, Ed saying about uh, English teaching uh, and upwards is where it might get difficult for uh, some non-other uh, tongue is, uh, yeah, I understand what you're trying to say here, Ed, that when you get to those higher levels, so when students are looking for a C1 or even a B2 or a, a C2, which is, you know, pretty difficult, but when students are looking to get that uh, more of a, a fluency uh, aspect, they do look for uh, what what they call a native speaker of the language, somebody like myself, somebody like yourself, Ed. But... Um, for the lower levels, definitely a Spanish person can, uh, who has a good background in English, can explain grammar well to somebody who might be struggling with that. So uh, definitely, uh, I agree with that, Ed. Um, Erica, also an English teacher, uh, adding to the debate, uh, you need a C2, but it's advisable to have a CELTA uh, to secure a teaching job in Spain. Yeah, to get a job in an academy, probably that's right, uh, Erica. But uh, yeah, a C2 uh, or a CELTA, which is the uh, Certificate of English Language Teaching for Adults. I think that's uh, what that acronym there stands for. Thanks for that, uh, Erica. But I've seen uh, people even with a C1 level teaching. I've even seen people with less than a C1 teaching, but I wouldn't recommend that because basically the pronunciation is an issue. Uh, yeah. No problem, Ed's uh, Manuel's got back to us there. No problems, Manuel. You are welcome. Uh, Wolfendorf coming in from uh, a cold Vienna. SD and uh, Maxim coming in from there. Good to see. That's uh, new viewers, I think. Haven't seen you guys in the chat section before. Great to see you today. Um, Francis saying, do visit Rhonda. Yeah, I went there a few years ago, uh, Francis. Uh, I, I enjoyed Rhonda, I will say. I went there with my parents on one of their many visits to Spain. Might have even been uh, when my son was very young, probably around 2012, I think we were there. Uh, we went up from uh, Malaga 
into the hills to uh, Ronda. And uh, I enjoyed a very nice uh, Rabo de Toro, which I think is a speciality of that part of the world, Francis. But it was nice. Uh, UB is uh, learning Portuguese. Uh, and uh, 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 the Iberian uh, Peninsula, I think, is uh, even Spanish. Uh, says UB. Yeah, Portuguese, difficult language for me to learn, especially the pronunciation. I think I'm, uh, if you learn Spanish first, I would recommend learning Portuguese and then Spanish rather than the other way around because um, uh, Portuguese, Portuguese, it's all about the phonetics for me. Very difficult to get your tongue around some of the, the pronunciation there. But I try. Uh, Daz, uh, Lanzarote is amazing. Uh, if you ever do come, then I can help you around. Very windy, though, at the moment. Yeah, I suppose uh, that is the case, Daz, but I'll definitely look you up. And I was also grateful to people in uh, Tenerife that got in contact with me as well, suggesting that I visit. Unfortunately, I didn't have time. I was only there for a few days. Didn't have time to see many people, so I apologize for that. But uh, definitely, uh, Daz, if I get the Lanzarote and, uh, and uh, my partner doesn't have a whole list of things to do, I'll definitely uh, get in contact. Thanks. Uh, what else? Let's have a look here quickly before I come to an end. I'm almost at the end of a uh, of the chat section. William saying that uh, damp, grey, uh, like Glasgow, Scotland. Um, yeah, well, I didn't want to mention any particular place, uh, William, but, yep, um, <laughs> you've got to appreciate it when the sun comes out, I imagine, in places like uh, Glasgow. I've only ever been to Glasgow twice. I can't really remember. It was a long time ago. One of the times I caught a ferry from uh, Northern Ireland across, and I think the train, st I think I stopped in Glasgow on the way to uh, Edinburgh. I think, I can't remember exactly, but I stayed in a uh, a B and b But I believe Glasgow has changed since then. Back in the 1990s was when I'm talking about. Uh, van living um, not legal in Lanthorote, says Daz. Um, camping maybe is not legal. I'm not sure about vans because I think vans concentrate in special areas for vans. At least that's what I saw in Tenerife. So I imagine that's it. Angela and John say that on the strength of my Bill Bow video, they went there for a few days and thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great city for a visit. Uh, lots of things to uh, do and see. Fantastic food and drink culture. It's also a manageable city as well. You hop on a bus, you can be at the, uh, on the coast relatively quickly as well. You can go to other places in that uh, Greater Bilbao area. It's very green. It's nice. People are relatively friendly. And um, I enjoyed Bilbao. It was a, a city that I thoroughly enjoyed. I would go back there if I could, but unfortunately, it's not on my plan for this year. I am going north, but not to Bilbao. What else we got going on here quickly? Uh, still cold in the UK and it's mid-April. Yeah, probably another month or so maybe before the weather starts to turn there. I'm not sure. Um, Basque country is nice, absolutely. What else we've got going on here? Almost coming to the end of the chat section. Um, oh, there we go. Daz saying that uh, uh, the neighbours sell excursions so I can get one, uh, get you in on one, stuff like that. Fantastic, uh, Daz. I will definitely let you know uh, if I get to Lanzarote. Uh, I'm sort of weighing up between Fuerteventura and Lanzarote. I've uh, checked out uh, Iberia Express. They've got some deals on. I'm going to try and go in the off-season if I can. Apparently there's a, there's a bit of a downtime. I think there's two down down seasons or downtimes in uh, what's the non-tourist seasons in uh, the Canary Islands. One is after the summer and another one is before the summer. So if you can sort of squeeze it in there, definitely be down uh, again. Uh, you'll be saying, um, I knew you'd uh, understand uh, written Portuguese. In my humble opinion, it's way closer to Spanish than they'll, they'll ever admit. Well, yeah, they come from the same they come from the same origin, basically. So if you can read Spanish, you can read Portuguese most definitely. There's uh, no problems with that. But the other the problems come when it comes to pronunciation uh, because Portugal has a broader range of um, uh, vowel sounds. Whereas Spain, Spanish is very strict with its vowels. There's only five vowels, five sounds. In English, we've got five vowels, but we've got probably 14 different sounds or maybe a few less, few more, not sure. And Portuguese is similar. And that's where it gets complicated. 
So Spanish A E I O U doesn't vary from that, whereas in English A E I O U, A can be four different sounds. So that's where the complications come from. But in Spanish, it's quite simple. And if I had my time again, I would definitely learn Portuguese first and then Spanish to have both of the languages. I think it would be easier that way. But that's just my opinion. Be interesting to see what people think. Now, uh, I'm going to wrap the uh, live stream up. We got up to 151 likes, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for your participation today in the chat section. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thanks for watching the uh, live stream today. I'll be back again on Sunday. I might put out a video on Saturday. I can't guarantee it. The one that I put out last Saturday for some reason went crazy. Don't know what happened with that video. So I might put out one on I might put a video out on Saturday, but as I said, no guarantees. Definitely I'll be back on Sunday uh, with another live stream. So hope to see you there. Uh, but if I get some more content out before then you can check that out as well. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Adiós.